and welcome back to Diet for Dropout with me, Naomi Balderstone, and I'm joined by Carolina today. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining me today. And you are a Kundalini activation <laughs> facilitator. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to hear about your journey and you used to do my lashes. So <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, I did. <laughs> a long time ago. I just wanted to say as well, I just always really love your content. You seem like such an embodied presence on social media and I just am really grateful for that. So. Oh, thank you. That's so nice to hear. Thank you. Um, so obviously my podcast is called Diary of a Dropout. So if you could please share with me, what did you drop out of? Or could you give us sort of a whistle stop tour of your journey? Just a quick overview. Go right back to wherever feels natural. Okay, so I used to have a beauty business. So I did beauty for about nine years and then I had my own beauty business and I was already kind of on this journey um, from the age of 17 and then it was just more connecting deeper to understand who I was and then I, two years ago, I connected with Kundalini, I went to Bali for six months and it was then my life completely just shifted and transformed. It was like there was always this like missing piece and the more I got to know myself and connect deeper to who I was and it was when I connected with Kundalini it took me on that journey of like inner knowing like okay what is it that I'm really passionate about and it wasn't that I wasn't passionate about beauty because it was a deep passion of mine and you know I believe that we always have gifts and we have more than one gift and it was a gift and the gift that I'm from grateful but it was getting to the point that I was like this is not fulfilling me anymore like, there's got to be something more. And from all the healing I did, I was very much like, okay, I love to help people. And when you're doing beauty anyway, you're very much kind of like that counsellor, like mm. just speaking and they're just expressing. And I always knew I had that, like, safe space about me to just to hold that space for other people. Mm. So there was always this thing, like, you know, I want to hold a space where I can heal people. So then, yeah, Kundalini happened. And I came back and I gave up beauty and I moved to Madura. <laughs> and everything was just so rapid, mm -hmm. but it felt so right. It, even though there was so much fear mm -hmm. and there was this unknown, but it was the best thing I did because I wouldn't be where I am today. Doing. What was the sort of specific turning point from being like, I'm doing my beauty business, it's going really well, and what what was the moment where you were like, this isn't this isn't fulfilling me to the level that I want to be fulfilled? I was so burnt out. Mm. I got diagnosed with burnout. I was so ill, like mentally, emotionally, physically and I was to the point that I just couldn't take on like life as you you know you should like you know you want to feel healthy you mm. want to feel alive you want to feel free and it was like I felt so restricted as well mm. and it was like the same thing over and over again you know, working 11 hours a day, living for the weekend, well, I would work some weekends, but it was just like that same loop, and it was just like, I was so tired, and I was like, there's got to be more, and you know when you have that kind of inner knowing, and mm. feeling that like, there's got to be more than this, like, this is not fulfilling me anymore, yeah. this is just not light me up, and going to be like truthful, it was like, you know, I was chasing the money, mm. You know, oh my gosh, yeah, doing so well, successful, great. What that chasing was depleting me. Mm. And I think that is something that I came to a deep realisation when I connected deep to who I am, that I was chasing so much. I was chasing the high life. I was chasing the success, you mm. know. Have a lot of money, have all this, have all that, you know, have this big successful business but it was like I guess I was in this like proving and chasing energy like you know well if I have this this is going to prove that you know I'm successful mm. in that and for my family you know especially 
for my father it was very much oh wow you know you're doing so great but it was like I was just chasing and it got tiring it got mm -hmm. so tiring and it's like when we begin to be you know when we're in that state of chasing the high life it does get tiring right like what we're yeah. trying to prove and then yeah Kundalini was like you don't need to chase it's, it's not here like what is what is success for you and, and it came to this success of feeling your own vitality of health happiness love and peace mm -hmm. and then that's when it shifted for me and it was like I don't want to do this anymore I don't want to do beauty anymore I don't want to be chasing that life I don't want to be doing it just you know for the money I don't want to be doing it for that and would you say that it was Kundalini then that changed your sort of mindset around what success is? Yes, 100%, because it was that inner connection, this inner union within myself, and it was like what society has led us into is, you know, you've got to have the good grades, you've mm. got to go to university, you've got to have the mortgage, have the house, have the children, be mm. all settled, mm. you know, have the money, have all that. But then actually it was more of, well, no, it was like success is way more to that. It's, it's happiness, mm. it's love, it's peace, it's good health, it's surrounding yourself around good people doing things like light up your soul, mm. it's the fun, it's the pleasure of mm. life, it's being in the present moment. So it's like success has been so visualised as something else, but actually it's, this is the success you feel within yourself. Mm. And mm. Kundalini changed that for me because I began to really connect with me and it was no longer this external you know, validation for the external resources, but actually it all came within me. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Just it all comes back to ourselves and our how our internal world then projects into the external. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean our internal world is what we mirror in our mm -hmm. external world. And that is why, you know, Kundalini for me was a journey of going inwardly, releasing the conditioning, the layers, the self-limiting beliefs, the trauma, everything that I was holding on to. So I shifted into a place of like a higher level frequency, the frequency of love, which I feel is the most powerful frequency mm -hmm. of them all. And when you shift that and when you change your whole internal world, your outer world, Will change too mm -hmm. because you will mirror that you know you know like they say what you attract is mm -hmm. you know what your energy gives is what you will attract mm -hmm. you are the mirror of what you attract in your mm -hmm. life and that is so true and I used to not believe that I'd be like that is absolute bullshit but it's mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. you know I think again we go into this like victim mentality but you know why am I doing this why am I attracting this why is the same thing happening to me but then as I reflect and um, most of the things that I attract in my life was because of what I held in mm. internally. So it's so important for us to shift up and to connect. Again, mm. it's about, it all comes to you. It's like no one else can change it for you. It's about you and it's about connecting deeper to who you truly are. Mm. Beneath those layers, beneath that conditioning, those mm. purging from whether that being society, education, parents, etc. Not that it's wrong, but it's just like that's just how we've been yeah, brought up. 100%. So obviously we've already spoken a lot about Kundalini, but it's a concept that's quite unfamiliar to me and mm -hmm. probably to a lot of my listeners. You know, I've heard you speaking about it, a lot of other people online, but could you try to? I know that it's like quite an energetic concept and quite hard to put into words, but if you could describe what actually is kundalini energy and sort of what role does it play in someone's healing practice if they were to engage in it okay so kundalini is our life force energy 
and what our life force energy is is our true essence so it's our truth it's our like highest self our highest consciousness so when we begin to go through kundalini kundalini awakening activation we are purifying our bodies we're coming into a purified state so whatever our bodies have been holding on to whether that be trauma suppressed emotions you know the heartbreak the grief self-limited beliefs ancestral we can carry stuff mm -hmm. from our ancestors our parents um whatever we've been holding on to is to be purified and released and resurfaced and Kundalini is a feminine energy, so it's a she energy, and it's a very soft and gentle energy, but also it's the fire energy, and it's it's the energy to connect you back home to you, bringing the safety, regulating your nervous system, but also so that you can understand yourself better and know who you are and what goes on mentally is actually what is deeply rooted into your body. Mm. So I sometimes like to call Kundalini like a talking therapy session, but without any talking, mm. because our bodies are so powerful. You know, we are the medicine. The medicine mm. lives within us. We are able to cure ourselves from any mental illness, you know, physical, emotional. We have the ability to do that, but we've just, I've never been educated mm. to do that. And so when you give your body the time and space, our bodies know exactly what to do. So when we go into these sessions, again, it's so hard to explain it because it is, it's a feeling, it's a mm -hmm. sensation, you know, you can't deny a feeling, right? You've got to witness it for yourself. So you're going into these sessions and you're going into, your body's just fully letting go, you're releasing. And as you're releasing, like things are being resurfaced, but to be resurfaced and looked at as a different perspective, perspective so you don't necessarily need to know or pinpoint what is this emotion coming up so say if you're feeling like a little bit of grief or a little bit of heartbreak or a little bit of shame or like you're just crying or your body's just moving and it's like oh I don't know why my body's in it but it feels good because it's like liberating but by you just being a witness is so healing itself mm -hmm. and that is your body doing it for you mm -hmm. Are you just lying there and giving your body the time and space? Yes, that somatic, like inner healing yes, intelligence it's... that we all have within us. You know, when you get a cut on your knee, your body knows to heal that. Yeah. And it's the same with our psyche and it's the same with our body and our yeah. past traumas. And when we have these sort of like mental illnesses, like that's your body's way of coping because yeah. you've not been given the space or the time. And it's, you know, similar with with lots of different healing modalities yeah. you know it's just giving your body the space to actually feel those feelings yeah and yes expressing so mm -hmm. kundalini is a way of expressing but not you don't have to talk you know mm -hmm. you don't have to pinpoint or know but by just feeling and witnessing your body's doing the work so that is what a kundalini session is and it, i mean it's got so many benefits in a sense of helping you heal mentally, physically, if you've got physical pain in your body as well, um, regulating your nervous system, this is a huge thing, is that a lot of people live in a dysregulated nervous system, and what we really underestimate is that have the power of having a regulated nervous system, mm -hmm. because our nervous system is, you know, what navigates us for a lot, it's like, it's the main part of our system, so it's in ensuring that that is regulated so it brings us back into a grounded more balanced state and when you are regulated it's the safety so we want to feel safe right we don't want to yeah. be in this fight and flight mode response so it's ensuring that we feel that safety within our bodies within ourselves so that we feel safe enough to receive and open mm. ourselves up to the abundance, the love, mm. the joy, the clarity, and come into the space like, oh my gosh, wow, this is mm. who I am. I'm so powerful. It's me. Like, oh, really? I can do this. It's like, how amazing is mm. that? And when I connect with Kundalini, I was like, oh my gosh, wow, like, we are so powerful. Mm. You know what to do. Mm. And, you know, we have this access to this, you know, whether that is, you know, taking, you know, psychedelics, um, meditation, somatics, mm. yoga dance you know it, it all comes back to the same frequency of this mm. life force and yeah. this life force is the journey back home to our mm. true essence oh, I'm such 
it's so powerful. Like the consciousness, our Christ consciousness, the higher our higher self. And it's you know when we have that gut feeling, like follow that. But when we connect more deeper, we have that gut feeling more stronger and stronger mm-hmm. and stronger. And we have more of this inner knowing. Like okay, like I know my path in life. I know who I am here to be. I know what I'm worth, I know what I deserve, the health is me, I am the powerful one, the vitality, the force, the fire, this is who I am. Mm. I love that, I love that. And I just wanted to go back to sort of nervous system safety, and I think it's a term that's mentioned like a lot in the context of healing and sort of spiritual work. So for you, what does it mean and what does it feel like to be disconnected and unsafe? in your own body so what it feels like being disconnected to your body it feels draining it feels unfulfilling it feels painful it feels foggy it feels like you are constantly sick Mm. I think I was always ill, like I was so ill all the time, pain in your body, a dysregulated nervous system is also depression, stressed, negative thoughts and beliefs, you know, there's constant negative thoughts that just run through your mind, not feeling what life is really Mm -hmm. about not feeling, you know, like the sun in your face. Mm -hmm. Like I never felt that for a long time. Mm -hmm. The wind, you know, really seeing, wow, like is this what life is? It doesn't feel like that. You just feel so consumed by this darkness and it's Mm -hmm. like, what am I doing? Is there a way out? It also feels, you know, tiring Mm -hmm. and you feel like you're lacking in life and you feel like life is happening against you Mm -hmm. constantly and it's just draining and the unsafety feels you know for me I was always feeling on edge you know the night terrors Mm -hmm. the night sweats the disturbed sleep not being able to sleep um again you can hold on to excess weight as well. Like my weight was always up and down. It was also the binge eating wasn't that mm-hmm. comfort. I had this cycle of binge eating and it all comes back to safety. Mm-hmm. Like we want to be safe. If we are holding on to trauma and emotions in our body, it's only what our body knows. And our body is thinking like, okay, I've got to keep them safe. I've got to keep them safe. And it's like you will constantly be contracting and contracting and contracting. And that's when you begin to close yourself off to the world. And that's when you begin to feel so consumed in your own thoughts and negative energy. And like in these habits of, you know, the top, not so good, toxic mm-hmm. habits. And I found myself going into such to- toxic habits where, you know, the partying, the drugs, mm-hmm. the alcohol, the binge eating. Again, the addiction of like buying all this like materialistic stuff because it was like this comfort. Mm. It was like, oh, I need something. So yeah. that was all related to not feeling safe, mm. the lack of worthiness, the not loving and accepting myself, my body, the beating up my body. Again, it all came to safety. And when I connect with Kundalini, it was that moment. I can't remember it so clearly. It was like. I was like, it's you, home is you, the safety is you, and I'm tearing up about it because it was like, I can never forget that feeling, mm. and when you finally feel safe in your body, you're like, Phew. it's like, you know, like, mm. the whole weight has just been lifted off your shoulders, mm. it's like, thank you, thank you, like, I'm home, I'm home, and Again, if I was to ask anyone, you know, what makes you feel safe? And, you know, people go, well, you know, this makes me feel safe. This makes me feel safe. But what about you? Do you make you feel safe? And I remember someone asked me before I went to Bali, 
it was actually my friend, like, what makes you feel safe? And I was like, oh, I don't know, my home, like, having a roof in my head. Like, she was like, is that what, 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 what about yourself? And I was like, I don't feel safe in myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to hold yourself. Yeah. So it's like what we crave is to feel safe. Safe enough so that we can receive. Mm. Safe enough that we can trust ourselves. Mm. Safe enough that we can attract. Safe enough that we can soften. Mm. Safe enough that we can speak our truth. Mm. I think also when you finally feel safe enough, I mean at least for me, I looked around and I was like, oh my gosh, so many people just don't feel safe. And that's where the drugs, the addictions, Mm -hmm. the alcohol, that's just so rampant in our society. And it's almost like you look around and you're like, most people have some sort of vice, something that they use to feel safe. Yeah. You know, or not true safety, but almost like this attempt attempt to come home when you started talking about softening it just really I felt like I uh, just talk about sort of feminine energy and being mm-hmm. able to soften into that um and I think we're hearing more and more about sort of the rise of the feminine mm-hmm. and goddess consciousness mm-hmm. um and could you explain for you what this means and also why do you think that there's a mass awakening happening now and particularly around these sort of themes so the feminine so again you know we've been so led in this masculine Mm -hmm. energy and we all have our masculine feminine aspects to ourselves but by you know religious aspects and you know you know society you know it's been very masculine dormant of you know push go force you know, you've got to have that do this to achieve this. It's the void and all that. But what the feminine is, the feminine is, you know, the gentle, the nurture, the flow, the mother. Mm-hmm. So it's the mother energy. It's the, the, the softening of allowing yourself to be fully present mm-hmm. within your own body even through the darkness so the feminine she is also dark and fierce she Mm. is just she's the shadow she's the shadow you and obviously you know we've been so disconnected from that because Mm. we've been so in this void so with the feminine she will show you your your dark side she will show you your shadows hence why a lot of people in this awakening there's a lot of people been facing their shadows i mean this year has been wild you know, so many people been going through the dark night of the soul, been facing things that they've never wanted to face. And it feels dark and gloomy at times. But what the feminine is, what she is showing to you, face this part of yourself, but with love and compassion. Mm. So the feminine is also the love and the compassion, you know? Like a mother energy. What is a mother energy? She is love and she's compassionate. Mm. She's also looking out for you and she's also... You know, showing you, you know, we all have our, you know, inner demons, so it's just about loving and accepting that instead of running from that. So, as a collective, we are going through this big spiritual awakening because we are shifting into a new evolution. Mm -hmm. We are shifting into the evolution of truth. Mm -hmm. And this is the Christ consciousness. And again, I won't go too into religion because. No, that's a soft subject. Mm. But we're shifting into like what is true, what mm. is really again spirituality that's been so tampered with and so materialized. And with the feminine, she will shift you into your true essence. So it all comes within you, and she will guide you on the path of enlightenment and allow you to face, you know the masculine and the feminine aspects, the wounded energy that you have within you, so that you can come into a place of safety and loving and and accepting yourself for all all that you are. Mm -hmm. And 
if anything, you know, the feminine, it's, it's such a nice to play to be in because when you're in the feminine as well, the feminine energy, it's, you know, it's the dance, it's mm. the playfulness to life, it's the joy, you know, we go back to the inner child, the play-like energy. When we're children, we're in this innocence, we're in this play, you know, we're fascinated by a piece of fluff and it's like, but we're just present, right? Mm. So it's taken us back into this present moment of remembering who we are, but also you're enjoying life to play with life mm. like it doesn't have to be so serious and I think as we begin to grow up you know it's like grow up you know you've got to be an adult this and this you can't be doing that but it's actually like the child is always within us mm. so it's for me it's so much hope because it's like the world is going to be so different it's going to be so different and we're going to shift into a place of more generosity authenticity and that's what we need more in the world and the more we heal within ourselves and heal mm. this feminine energy bring this feminine energy in our life it will balance the masculine energy and this is when we will have more connection you know we're not here to, we've been so separated from ourselves but also from other people mm. i mean look at covid it separated so many people yeah. but it's like actually it's about connection connection to ourselves but also with the others and positively spreading you know the love mm -hmm. and the feminine is taking you back into this place of love and love is so much more it's infinity beyond also the feminine there's no judgment mm -hmm. you know you don't need to face and put on a mask it's all from that authenticity so this is why it's so powerful that the feminine now is rising because it will bring people back to deeper connection, deeper love, deeper fulfillment, deeper happiness, but also not only for ourselves, but for our children, you know, the ones before us. I think for me, I used to really feel like, oh, I don't want to have children mm. in this world because mm. of how the world was going. But now I have this hope because it's like, we're healing. I mean, the children that are being born now, they're all little star seeds, they're all from the new earth energy. So we're shifting into the new earth energy. So it's so important that we do the work and we keep spreading this because we do also do it for our family. So the feminine, yeah, and it's the embodiment. Mm -hmm. It's coming back, it's connection, it's the regulation, regulating yourself, your nervous system and inner connection and the divine union. As well, the feminine will bring the divine union with relationships whether that being you being with a woman man like it will bring back the unification of relationships and there will be true relationships coming back together mm. what are some sort of practical ways that someone could get in touch with this divine feminine energy so through like somatics through energy healing but so with the divine feminine it's about the connection so it's like around your the room space mm. it's connecting back to your room it's you know it's the sexual energy it's the orgasmic feeling for like for life it's the pleasure for life for me i mean kundalini is what got me back mm -hmm. into this feminine embodiment um but also dancing mm. dancing is a great way of getting into this feminine embodiment and meditating it's about connecting i mean if i've only known by connecting to it with the kundalini because that's what opened me up to mm. it but then i will connect to it daily by doing dancing by um softening self-soothing mm. loving myself um like affirmations so you mentioned psychedelics before and that's obviously something i'm very interested in mm. and what i'm training to do and i feel like it's going to be a really big part of my purpose mm -hmm. here on this earth um so if you feel comfortable would you like to share any experiences that you've had with psychedelics and how they've influenced or changed your path yeah, so I have experienced ayahuasca, mm -hmm. which is a beautiful, very powerful energy. So again, ayahuasca, she is it's the mother energy. Um, I mean, yeah, ayahuasca, I felt like I fast-forwarded 
a lot of like my healing. Mm. I mean, when I went into ayahuasca, it's really hard to explain, but I mean, she'll take you on the journey. It's intense. <laughs> you purge a lot. Um, but if I hadn't done ayahuasca, then I wouldn't have take. I wouldn't be where I am as well today. And if anything, ayahuasca helped me um, a lot with my mental health, mm -hmm. with my like depression. That's what helped me a lot, and also like purify my body. Again, I was a very, very sick for a long period of time, so it helped me with the sickness. But, I mean, very insightful. Um, had a lot of clarity afterwards, the experience. I believe that in the Amazon plant medicine is an incredible cure. Mm. I really think it's really good to have it as part of therapy because, again, it gets you, takes you to the root cause. Mm -hmm of what it really is. I mean, so cool, okay, talking therapy is amazing and it's absolutely great, but I do believe it is about getting to the root cause. And sometimes when we can be talking, we don't know, but then when we take psychedelics, it really takes us into our subconscious, into the consciousness. So it's mm -hmm. like we're more into that level. So things are more able to come up. So mm -hmm. definitely amazing. Um, but yeah, psychedelics have been amazing for me. I mean, with, with mushrooms, been so fun yeah. so fun yeah like it's actually incredible like how we are such creative beings mm. and with psychedelics i've really like seen the creativity that we mm. have it sort of just like opens your it mind. really opens your mind yeah. and it's like and then it's everything in your outer world is so different mm. like with nature itself you see it for like what it is, and I think when I was doing ayahuasca, it was like, and I was doing other plant medicines, I I was in this hut for like two weeks, and basically you can't like speak to anyone, it's just you and your mind, and I was just like, honestly, it was like, I was talking to the trees at some point, but it was like, everything felt so like enhanced, mm. and I don't know if you've had the same thing, but you feel so at one mm. with everything in, when you're in that experience. Yeah, you're just part of the one. Yeah. You're just, you are the one. <laughs> you are, and you're just like, oh my gosh, wow. Mm -hmm. It's like, you you see things from a different lens. Mm. How do you explain that? Because it's like, again, it's that feeling, isn't it? Mm. It's it's like, for me, after sitting, sitting with mushrooms for the first time, it was genuinely like I'd been born again. It was like seeing yeah. the world with fresh eyes. Mm. I was like, how have I never noticed the leaves are that green, mm -hmm. or the sky is that blue. How have I never noticed how beautiful the crinkles in someone's eyes are? Mm -hmm. Or like the the pure detail that the world is in. It's literally like putting on a pair of like mm -hmm. a new prescription pair of glasses. You're like, whoa, yeah, it's so beautiful. And how have I been so numb to this? It's almost like the feeling, yeah, of like I'm so grateful to live. Yeah. And I think that is what I got through psychedelics again, and also with Kundalini. I was mm. like, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful that I live in this so world. So grateful to have a human experience. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, yeah, we're just souls mm. living a human experience life, aren't we? Mm. We're just conscious beings. And if anything, you know, we're just, when we go into these psychedelic experiences, we're just waking up from a dream state mm. and we're just seeing things for what they really are. And I think that's just so powerful. But I, I really believe that psychedelics is an amazing modality to mm. access and for people to really get in the root cause. I mean, it, it's, it's definitely something that should be incorporated with therapy. And I see that's happening now. Mm. Mm. And it will definitely take you on that journey again, back to the inner connections and the safety mm. and that oneness. Mm. Yeah, I think they're going to be a really key part in this sort of mm -hmm. new earth, in this awakening. Yeah. Because there's such resurgence in research, um, and it's just making sure that it's done in the most respectful yes. and safe 
way and sacred because it's mm. so sacred yeah. and I think again that's what's been so abused mm. with drugs they've been so abused again you know with weed that I think that's so abused and how mm. it's taken mm. but yeah it's so sacred mm. it's such a sacred plant you know our ain- our ancestors you know psychedelics all of this it's all in our ancient wisdom yeah. they would use it you know for with intention mm. so it's so important to have sure. it with a pure intention yeah. so when people do have a bad experience or trip or anything, it's because they're not in that space of pure intention mm-hmm. and sacredity. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, don't abuse a plant because, again, mm-hmm. it's an energy. Yeah, and treat it with the reverence and respect yeah. that it deserves. Because it's like, it's a god. It's like you're the god. It's the god. With, it's a god energy. So mm-hmm. it's like, it's really important to respect that. So that's why I do believe, like, of what you're doing to hold that space for people in that sacred space Mm. is so important also to have someone there to navigate you through that space Mm. because Mm. I mean in a psychedelic experience like it can take you on a journey it can take Mm. you on a wild one it can take you on an uncomfortable one it can take you on a great one but it's important to have that person to Mm. navigate you through and I mean with my ayahuasca ceremonies I was some tough and bad experiences but there was people there navigating me through it Mm. and it's like we we need that space so Mm. that is where people go wrong it's when they don't appreciate the sacredity Mm. of it Mm. and have that intention Mm. um so just going back to sort of general what sort of challenges have you faced on your journey and how have you overcome them? Yes, wow. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. <laughs> you kind of think you know, you um, I mean, I feel like I've been faced with a lot... I think we're all faced with like a lot of challenges in some certain way and extent. Mm. I think the biggest challenges for me were the sexual abuse. Mm. I mean, I felt like a lot of my life was taken away from me, especially from such a young age, you know? And it's like, I was just an innocent girl. Mm. And growing up, as growing into a teenager, um, it's that shame and that guilt and that disgust, you know? Like, of having that particular someone abuse your your sexual energy Mm -hmm. and then for me I held a lot of blame Mm -hmm. I felt like it was me it was my fault um and that was really tough because it impacted my relationships really impacted my relationships it really impacted my worth Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this self sabotage, this not being enough, um, not feeling worthy of crying, but I wanted that out. Um, it was painful because, you know, it was also more of the fact, you know, this was a family friend and it's like I had deep love for this man because it was someone who brought me up, and for me, it was then trust I felt it very hard to trust Mm -hmm. and that was a real big you know reoccurring challenge in my life you know I battled with it for so long um and that's where majority of my depression came Mm -hmm. from and the situations and the relationship you know that I was attracted to my life it was all impacted from that and Mm -hmm. I felt like a lot of my life was taken away from that but then forgiveness I think Mm. forgiveness is the best thing you can do and how I overcame it all was the forgiveness and the compassion not only to that person but for myself Mm. and it's like I no longer need to blame, blame myself but forgive Mm. and I think that's what helps you overcome it the most 
and then another big challenge for me was no thank you no it felt good to share was and I know that a lot of people feel really ashamed to share Mm. about when it comes to sexual abuse and I think we've all been kind of sexually mis abused in some way where it doesn't have to be so extreme but I think we've all had those experiences and it's like you know it's just it's okay for you to open up and Mm. it's okay for you to be vulnerable in these moments and that you're not alone Mm. and you know seek out for the support around you um and it's nothing to be ashamed about but you know forgive yourself and I know that can be really hard because it took me years and years and years and years but I got there Mm. um another thing would be grief when I lost my granddad, it was like my best, he was my best friend. Mm. Um, and that was a huge challenge. That was just hard, that was painful. I mean, grief, how can you explain grief? Mm. It's, I mean, I never knew what it felt like until I experienced it, but he was just my best friend and he's the one that, you know, looked out for me. And it was only the man that I felt safe with mm. and only trusted and and when that was taken away from me, it was like, I felt like my life was crashing down again. Mm. And then that's when I went and did ayahuasca and then afterwards and then came and then I went done Kundalini. So it was like, that was like another like epiphany, spiritual Traps awakening for moment. Healing. Yeah, yeah, for healing. And I think it is, it's the moments that we go mm. through the challenges, the darkest moments mm. where we have this moment of like, okay, this is yeah. the, the time to heal and to go further and deeper. That's, I always sort of, take comfort in that as well because as I look over my life and I feel the same and I see okay the darkest moments were then what brought them out the most amount of yeah. healing and then when something as you know you can start to see the pattern emerging and if something you know that feels really painful happens and like something good is really around the corner yeah <laughs> even though at the moment you're like yeah <laughs> <laughs> what is going on <laughs> no. but it is like that you are on the verge of that you know big breakthrough mm. and you know a lot of people don't see that but it's mm. like again I feel like this is what the world is bringing us to to realise to see that it's our breakthroughs but if anything that helps me conquer these challenges was taking the natural route mm. I mean I was going back and forth to doctors and they were just prescribing me tablets yeah. and antidepressants and anxiety. I remember I was addicted to sleeping tablets. Sticking a plaster over. Yeah, yeah, and it was like, again, I was going to like therapy, but and then it was like, I was so numb in mm. therapy because I was so numb by all the medication. Yeah. And then it was when I started to incorporate energy healing, meditation, somatics, started to really invest myself in books, mm. reading, um, just you know searching things online um, and then going to like retreats and healing and connecting with other people and circles and mentors uh, invested so much in that and then that's what actually helps mm. me to get to where I am mm. today so it was the natural route and I believe that is the best route to take mm. because that is what will save you, that's what will help you because it's like there is no avoidance or anything, mm. it's just it will take you into where you need to go. And what's one piece of advice that you would give to someone who is feeling so trapped without their purpose, unsafe in their body, feeling disconnected, what would you say? My advice would be that it's safe for you to speak up and express your feelings and that just reach out to someone that you do feel safe and comfortable with and that you're not alone on this journey and that there is always light at the end of the tunnel Mm -hmm. so there is hope and yeah just take that step forward and it's going to be okay Mm. is there any sort of specific practices or rituals or a sort of tangible takeaway that maybe someone listening to this episode after hearing this could take away and do at home 
Yeah, so I would, so for me, like a typical routine, like morning routine, morning, I think morning, morning routines are so important. Mm. So I would avoid going on your phone in the morning and just put some nice chill music, light and incense, get your journal out, write in your journal. I think journaling is mm. just amazing. It's the best thing I can. And just take take the simple steps by just writing things that you're grateful for. I mean, gratitude is the most highest vibration of all because it's the vibration of love. And, you know, gratitude is not necessarily being about posit- positive, overly positive. It's about mm. being realistic. So, you know, just write five things you're grateful for, whether that be, you know, I'm grateful that I can wake up in a bed. I'm grateful for the roof over my head. I'm mm. grateful that I can drink water. You know, I'm grateful that I can brush my teeth. Like, just anything so small. And... A little small meditation in the morning as well is so helpful. Just have a look on YouTube. There's some amazing YouTubes there. For me, I always start off the morning with Abram Abram Hicks. I love her. Like I just love her teaching. So just a little meditation, or just in, med- in meditation in stillness. I know a lot of people don't know how to meditate. Like how do I do it? But even if you just put a guided one on YouTube, mm-hmm. that would really be helpful. And then get yourself out in nature. Get yourself mm-hmm. out there. Rain sun wind get yourself out Mm. there nature is such a healer and just even if you just sit and you just feel the wind in your face like i recommend doing that just get yourself out there um another thing is dance Mm. ground yourself get your your feet on the soil the ground and just incorporate you know love and devotion to yourself and that can be something so small by just giving yourself a hug Mm. or just buying yourself some flowers and giving yourself you know a positive word of affirmation even though if it feels uncomfortable Mm. it's just those little small things um if anything what helps me and i absolutely love is dancing Mm. Dancing is just like the best thing you can do. Even when you're sad. Mm. Just even if you just put some like boss bitch music on in the morning just or just in the day and just have a little dance, put your earphones in, listen to music. I think music is just so powerful. Mm-hmm. So yeah, dance and you know, surround yourself with people that light you up. Mm. It's okay to say no, set boundaries, no people pleasing mm-hmm. and yeah, just do things that help, like, light you up. Mm-hmm. That's cool. um, so, last question. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, what's next for you? Um, are there any upcoming projects or retreats or offerings or workshops that you'd like to share with the audience? Yeah, so I've got lots of exciting things coming up. Some things a secret, but... Yeah. <laughs> um, so... I have retreats coming up, so I've got a retreat in October, November, and then next year in April, um, which I are in Madeira, so I live in Madeira now, <laughs> which is beautiful. And I offer online sessions, so group sessions online, um, also in person, so I do visit Jersey now and then in the UK, but mostly online. And I offer like one-to-one sessions and also like healing packages. So there's a healing packages of like five weeks with me. And that's like five weeks intensive transformative weeks where we incorporate Kundalini sessions, but also with my one-to-one support and also a healing booklet, which I have personalized with what has all helped me. So this will be like taking you to self-love, inner child, womb Mm -hmm. healing, um, understanding who you are, your values, and finding your purpose and what you want to do in your life. So it's a real intensive five weeks, but it's so transformative because it's like that commitment and devotion of like, okay, like, and having that support with you. Mm. And then I do like the order, like containers of just like divine feminine embodiment, which is what I put out there now and then on Instagram. So for now is that I'm going to be doing more podcasts just sharing more about journey in different um areas around like spirituality and i don't like to label things <laughs> um and then yeah there are some exciting things coming up but i think if anything i'm just 
flowing with life, mm -hmm. dancing with life, um, just don't chase, I attract. Amen. Being in this immense gratitude of just living and being here now. And you know, I just trust, I just trust that life is happening for me and that what is meant for me won't pass by me. So I'm just happy to just be here. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you so today. much um, for having me. Loved listening and just absorbing all your wonderful wisdom. I feel really grateful. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure.